The other topic which is related to CNS, the central nervous system is epilepsy. So today we will discuss about anti-epileptic drugs. What is epilepsy, how it is caused and what are the drugs which are used in the treatment of epilepsy. So what is epilepsy? So normally brain generates some electric impulses whereby the activity of the body can be monitored. But here if the electrical activity in the brain is altered then that causes epilepsy. That is it is a chronic medical condition where the electrical activity of the brain can be altered. So here we can see there are various areas in the brain. One is motor area where the movement of the body can be controlled and the prefrontal cortex and the other one is sensory areas where the senses in the body can be monitored and there will be visual visual area auditory area so there are different areas in the brain where each and every activity can be monitored by the generation of electrical impulses in the brain so what are seizures so seizures are nothing but these are the sudden or else we can say these are the transitory or uncontrolled episodes of brain dysfunction so why this brain dysfunction is happening so it is because of there are uh, neurons which are present in the brain so neurons are the basic unit of the brain so these neurons if there is any abnormal discharge of the neuronal cells along with the motor as well as behavioral as well as sensorial changes so if there is any motor sensory or behavioral change along with the abnormal discharge of the neuronal cells then it leads to the repetitive episodes of these uh, brain dysfunction and that condition is called as seizures so here a group of chronic cns disorders associated with the seizures is called as epilepsy so what are seizures? As I told you, because of the abnormal discharge of the neuronal cells, it causes brain dysfunction and that leads to seizures. So these seizures, the causes of these seizures, there are various causes of these seizures. For example, infection, if there is any infection to the brain and uh, because of the use of the uh, antineoplastic agents, so side effect of these antineoplastic agents, as well as if there is any head injury and sometimes it may be inheritory also. And these febrile seizures so febrile seizures are nothing but the seizures which are caused in the infants so if there is a seizures which are produced in the infants that is called febrile seizures and which are usually treated with these anti-epileptic drugs and these seizures they are having um, in the sense uh, if they are not uh, treated that may lead to severe adverse conditions what are the causes of these seizures? So there are various causes like trauma, the person under uh, the person is in depressing condition for longer period of time, encephalitis that is inflammation in the brain, and because of the, it is it may be the side effect of various drugs. And if a, if a child is having a trauma by birth, then also the seizures are observed and withdrawal from depressants. So if we uh, withdraw all of a sudden the antidepressant drugs, then uh, sorry, if we withdraw uh, the uh, depressant drugs all of a sudden, then also it leads to seizures, tumors, if there is any tumor in the brain and high feveric conditions, hypoglycemia, if the blood levels are decreased, in, uh, blood glucose levels are decreased and extreme acidosis. So if the acid environment of the body increases or if alkaline environment of these, uh, of the um, alkaline environment in the body increases. So if in both these conditions, in extreme acidosis as well as in extreme alkali media, then definitely the seizures can be observed and hyponatremia if there is any decreased sodium levels and hypocalcemia if the calcium levels are decreased and idiopathic so idiopathic is a condition or it is a uh, idiopathic is a disease where the cause of the disease or disorder is unknown let us see the nature of epilepsy. So there are various types of epilepsy. So how can we categorize these types based on the nature? So one thing, the seizures can be partial or generalized. So based on the location as well as based on the uh, neuronal discharge, these are categorized into partial as well as generalized seizures. And here the attacks or as we can say, uh, because of the seizures, because of the cause of the seizures, mainly the motor, sensory as well as behavioral activities can be attacked or these, these, uh, there can be alterations in these changes and sometimes in severe conditions it may even cause unconscious, unconsciousness to the person. 
here in the epileptic conditions there are three uh, main regions where the uh, where the site of epilepsy can be caused so one thing is the brain if there is any differences or disturbances in these uh, functioning of the brain for example if we take auditory cortex is there visual cortex and we have sensory cortex motor cortex so here various functions are controlled in the brain so if there is any sensory changes or motor changes or behavioral changes if there is any uh, fluctuations in these activities then epilepsy can be caused and here the synapse so synapse is a site where the neurotransmitters are released and thereby the electrical uh, electrical activities or the electrical impulses are generated in the brain so here if there is any disturbances in the synapse also then then also the epilepsy or seizures can be occurred and the ion channels so ions ions play a major important role so if these ions are in reduced quantity if the so if there uh, if there is reduced sodium or reduced calcium levels then definitely the seizures can be caused let us see the classification of these epileptics epileptic seizures so these epileptic seizures are divided into partial or focal seizures as well as generalized seizures so partial or focalized seizures are again divided into simple partial seizures and complex partial seizures whereas generalized seizures are categorized into generalized tonic tonic seizures absence seizures tonic seizures atonic seizures as well as clonic and myoclonic seizures let us see about partial seizures, how they are caused and what are the effects. So first thing is simple partial, which is also called as Jacksonian. So here in these type of seizures, it mainly involves one part of the brain. So if we know, we all know that, see the right side of the brain controls left side, uh, left side parts uh, functioning as well as left side brain controls the right side functioning. So here it involves only one side. So either it affects the right side as well as left side whereby one part or sorry, is one side of the body functioning are impaired. And here it mainly involves with the focal motory sensor as well as uh, speech disturbances. So if a person is uh, having the, these uh, simple partial seizures then there may be disturbances in the speech of that person also. And the seizure symptoms don't change during the, uh, during the seizure in the sense. Uh, if a person is have, I mean, if suffering from seizures and during the time of the seizures, the symptoms won't be altered and there will be no alteration of consciousness. So the p patient, I um, mean, the person cannot, uh, will not be either conscious or unconscious. The uh, state of this consciousness cannot be altered in these kind of seizures. So if we see complex partial seizures which are also called as temporal lobe epilepsy. So temporal lobe epilepsy the name itself indicates it is because of the impairment of the temporal lobe. So there are various lobes in the brain So because of the impairment of the temporal lobe this type of epilepsy is caused and this, this is I mean if this epilepsy is caused then definitely it leads to confusion in the person and there may be improper or dazed behavior in the sense the person behavior will be changed when compared to his uh, normal behavior and the motor activity is also impaired and it causes a repetitive coordinated movements so normally the movements which are caused in the in the human being normal human being if we compare the epileptic person and the normal person then the movements which are observed in the sense the hand leg and whole body movements will be in a repetitive mode and there will be consciousness is impaired or lost I mean, in the sense the person becomes unconscious so let us see about generalized seizures so first one is generalized tonic clonic seizures so in the name itself generalized seizures it means there will be the abnormal discharge in the neurons and the recruitment of neurons throughout the cerebral, uh, cerebrum so here if there is any impairment in the neurons and abnormal discharge through the neuronal cells then all over the body functioning will be altered so this is generalized seizures and here the uh, there are two phases in the general in this type of uh, uh, in, in this type of seizures that is tonic phase as well as clonic phase. Here the convulsions um, are occurring regardless of the site. In the sense all over the body the convulsions may occur. So tonic phase. So what, what is this tonic phase as well as 
clonic phase. So the tonic phase is nothing but the muscle contraction will be there for longer period of time whereby the, uh, the, it causes a risk of ventilation. So here the contraction of the muscles or else the contraction, the contraction movements of the muscles, the contractory state, it, it will be persisted for longer period of time. And clonic state is nothing but where the contraction and relaxation of the muscles is altered, but that will be in a repetitive mode. So that is the reason it is called as bilateral or symmetrical movements or bilaterally symmetrical movements or running movements. The other one is absence seizures which are also called as petit mal seizures. So these type of seizures it causes uh, there may be sometimes it may cause consciousness and sometimes it may cause unconsciousness. So there will be abrupt loss of consciousness in the patients and it, it may sometimes cause motor dysfunctioning. So the motor functioning of the person can be altered and it causes a uh, usually in the brain there are various waves which are generated by the brain so here the wave discharge in the brain the speed of the wave or the frequency of the wave which is discharged in the brain is almost 2.5 to 3.5 hertz so it, this frequency also determines the type of epilepsy which the person is suffering from and this absence seizures, it lasts for about short duration of time, that is up to 5 to 10 seconds. But here, the frequency of the seizures is more. In the sense, in a day, the person may, uh, uh, um, the person may undergo this type of seizures for many times. So, if, if the seizure occurs, it occurs only for 5 to 10 seconds. But the frequency is long. The frequency occurs in a repetitive manner. And this type of seizures are mostly observed through childhood stage itself. And this is because of the low calcium current. So, as I told you, the low ionic content also causes seizures. So, this is a type of seizure because if, which is due to because of the low calcium levels. Tonic seizures. So tonic seizures are because of the loss of consciousness. So if um, I mean if a uh, tonic seizures usually cause loss of consciousness and they are um, this is because of the autonomic nervous system. If there are any disturbances in the autonomic nervous system then the tonic type of seizures are caused. And the other one is atonic seizures or atypical seizures. So these seizures are mainly because of the I mean if these type of seizures occur, they cause loss of posterior tone. I mean, the movements of the posterior region will be altered and there will be sagging of the head or falling. The person can't look proper. The head may either fall or the person's uh, neck because the uh, muscles or the nerves which are present in the neck region can be impaired whereby the person's uh, head movement can be altered and there will be, um, sometimes the person may lose consciousness. Clonic and myoclonic seizures. So what are clonic seizures? Clonic seizures are nothing but the rhythmic contractions of muscles. So if there is a, a, the contraction of the muscles is in a rhythmic manner. But if you see in the myoclonic seizures, the contraction is not in a rhythmic manner. And in clonic seizures, there may be loss of consciousness and there will be marked autonomic manifestations. There will be disturbances in the autonomic nervous system. And if you see myoclonic seizures, these are these look like jerks. In the sense, they are isolated clonic jerks. So, if a person is having this type of seizures and jerk movements are observed in the body, as well as at the same time, if we observe EEG that is uh, electrical encephalogram if we observe the EEG of this uh, the person who is suffering from this myoclonic seizures then we can find the burst like peaks the peaks which are observed in the EEG are like burst like peaks what are infantile seizures the name itself indicates these seizures which are caused uh, uh, infantile spasms these are the seizures which are caused in the infants or which are um, I mean the epilepsy is caused from birth itself so it is an epileptic syndrome where it shows bilateral effects so here the person may have rapid movements rapid muscular movements as well as it is characterized by the myoclonic jerks and all of a sudden there will be I mean if a person is uh, if a child is having all of a sudden the hands limbs as well as the feet will be extended and the person will have the myoclonic jerks so with the extension of the body the jerks will be absorbed. 
So let us see the classification of these anti-epileptic drugs. So what are the drugs which are used in the treatment of epilepsy? So there are various category of drugs. The first category is barbiturates. So there is only one drug which is used under this category that is phenobarbitone. And the other class of drug is deoxybarbiturates that is primidone and hydantoin drugs that is fentoin, immunostilbin that's carbamazepine and succinamide category which includes the drug called ethosuximide and aliphatic carboxylic acids which include drug called valproic acid or sodium valproate. Benzodiazepines include drugs like clonazepam, diazepam and clobazepam and phenyltriazine it includes drugs like lamitrogen and cyclic GABA analog that is gabapentin and there are various newer drugs which are introduced that is vigabatrin, topiramide, tiagabine and leviract, leviracetam. So these are the various drugs which are used as anti-epileptics. So each and every drug has its pharmacological actions and each and every drug has its anti-epileptic activity but mostly marketed formulation of anti-epileptic drug is phenytoin. So here based on the type of seizures the treatment of the the, the treatment to the person is given. For example if we take tonic clonic seizures which is also called as grand mal seizures the main drugs which are administered or the drug of choice is carbamazepam, carbamazepam valproate Phenytoin and phenobarbital. So if these drugs fail to show their effect, there are alternative drugs like topiramide, lamotrigine and gabapentin. And there are uh, uh, the partial type of seizures, whether it may be simple or complex. The drug of choice is carbamazepine or topiramide or phenytoin or valproate. And the alternative drugs which are used in the treatment of this partial seizures are phenobarbital, lamotrigine and gabapentin. In the absent seizures or petit mal seizures, the drug of choice is valproate or ethosuximide and the alternative drugs which are used are clonazepam and lamotrigin. And in myoclonic and atonic seizures, the drug of choice is valproate and the alternative drugs are clonazepam. And in status epilepticus, so this is also one of the type of epileptic, uh, epileptic condition and the drug of choice is diazepam which is given through IV root, phenytoin, IV root and valproate and the alternative drug is phenobarbital and if we consider febrile seizures or the seizures in the infants the drug of choice is diazepam and uh, which is given through rectal root so this is one of the most markable formulation and the diabetes which is given through IV root and valproate let us see the treatment so here if we see the uh, I mean, uh, up to 80% of the patients which are who are suffering from these partial partial seizures can be treated very easily. Or as we can say, uh, the seizure, these type of seizures, partial seizures can be controlled and the treatment is very easy. And most of the patients, 80% of the patients will suffer from these partial type of seizures. And if we see absence or generalized seizures, the uh, these type of seizures are rare. And the anti-epileptic drugs, they... Uh, what do they do? They just suppress the seizures. In the sense, the seizure frequency, epileptic frequency can be controlled. But they never cure epileptic condition. And uh, if we see here, the dose or else we can say, uh, the therapy is given for almost 6 months to 1 year based on the severity of the epilepsy and type of epileptic condition. And here, the initial uh, initially, the treatment is given with single drug and if monotherapy fails, then multiple or polytherapy is given. What are the advantages of monotherapy? So mostly monotherapy is recommended in rare conditions if monotherapy fails then combinations are given. So in this uh, most of these anti-epileptic drugs have severe side effects. So in order to prevent these this monotherapy is very advantageous because it will have very fewer side effects as well as very fewer drug interactions and thereby the compliance in the sense the uh, if we give many tablets to the patients the patient won't willingly take those tablets. So that is the reason the uh, it will be better complaints it will be better um, taken by the patients as well as there will be low cost and in uh, addition to the second drug result in this significant improvement as i told you if monotherapy fails then combination will be given in order to show uh, synergistic effect or more advantageous effect 
And here, if we give single drug, then the administration of the drug is also easy. And most of the drugs are through orally. Most of the antiepidemic drugs are preferred through oral route only. But here, as these are dose-dependent drugs, the dose of the drug should be monitored. And even the drug, because of the T halves of the drug, even the drug concentration in the plasma also should be monitored. The sudden withdrawal uh, of these drugs should be avoided because sudden withdrawal may lead to various adverse effects and these adverse effects the withdrawal syndromes may last for almost two to three years which is very longer period of time so let us see the first uh, category of drugs that is barbiturates the drug which come under this category is phenobarbital so phenobarbital is one of the oldest anti-epileptic drug we can say this is the first and foremost drug which is uh, used as an anti-epileptic drug and which is uh, we can see this is one of the safest drug and it does not have any sedation effect so fewer fewer anti-epileptic drugs they have the side effect of sedation but here this phenobarbital it does not have any sedative effect and this is the main drug of choice with the uh, drug of choice in the type of epilepsy in the infant so in the febrile seizures this is one of the main drug which is used but here, uh, this phenobarbital, if we are giving phenobarbital, then the acid-base balance, so the acid as well as base balance in the body should be, uh, we have to check or we have to monitor this acid-base balance. So let us see the mechanism of action. So here, the, it increases the inhibitory neurotransmitters. So there are various neurotransmitters in the body, like acetylcholine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, or adrenaline, or noradrenaline. These are the type of neurotransmitters which show excitatory effect. But whereas the neurotransmitters like GABA and dopamine, they show inhibitory uh, effects. So here, GABA is one of the neurotransmitters which show inhibitory effects. So here we can see the GABA receptor, it is having various binding sites. So here there are barbiturate binding site, benzodiazepine binding site, protein kinase binding site and various other binding sites. So these barbiturates, if they bind to those barbiturate sites, this phenobarbital, it goes and binds to the barbiturate site and thereby the GABA receptors open and the calcium entry takes place. The calcium entry is taking place, then the GABA is binding to the GABA receptors and thereby it is exerting its actions. What are the clinical uses of this phenobarbital? So this is mainly used in partialized seizures or generalized tonic clinic seizures and febrile seizures. So, but there are various side effects of these uh, phenobarbital. So one of the side effects is sedation. So it may cause sedation. It sometimes may cause sedation. If the sedation, if we... Uh, the sedation is caused only if the phenobarbital is used for a longer period of time. So in the therapeutic doses, it does not cause any sedation and it shows a cognitive impairment. So there will be impairment in the functioning of the body as well as behavioral changes. And the liver enzymes, the, uh, the liver enzyme secretion will be more in the, in the sense the induction of the liver enzymes will be more thereby rapid metabolism occurs in the body and at the same time it may worsen the condition of abdomen absence and atonic seizures, atonic seizures. The other drug is uh, phenytoin. We can say this is one of the most old, uh, one of the most marketed or we can say mo one of the most potent anti-epileptic drug and this is also one of the oldest drug which is used but here uh, if we compare there is a drug called phosphenitoin which is a pro-drug in the sense uh, phosphenitoin is in the inactive form and this phosphenitoin is converted to phenytoin in order to exert this anti-epileptic activity and it is used in fetal hydantoin syndrome. Here if we see the mechanism of action of this phenytoin, here it mainly acts in the uh, sodium blocking, sodium channel blocking condition. So here there are three different states of sodium channel. So one is closed state, open state as well as inactive state. So here in the inactive state, there will be no entry of the uh, sodium channel, sodium ions into the channel. But once if the channel gets opened from the extracellular side, the sodium enters into the body, enters into the cell membrane and if the sodium enters, uh, once it enters, it the sodium channel will get 
closed thereby preventing the exit of the sodium channels out of the so out of the membrane so here uh, this epilepsy is caused because of the low sodium ions also so the it for this phenytoin acts by entering or as we can say it allows the sodium channel it enter to enter into the plasma membrane thereby preventing the epileptic condition let us see the pharmacokinetics of this phenytoin. So phenytoin is mostly preferred through oral route and it is well absorbed in the body. And 80 to 90 percent of the phenytoin is protein bound. In the sense, if it binds to the plasma proteins, it remains unchanged and thereby it can show more effect. And it induces liver enzymes also. And it is metabolized in the liver to the inactive metabolite. So here phenytoin can be converted to phosphenytoin, which is an inactive metabolite. The metabolism. So here the metabolism shows saturation kinetics. In the sense, the metabolism uh, of this phenytoin will occur only to some extent. So once the uh, metabolic capacity of this phenytoin is increased or as it reaches to the saturation capacity, then it uh, what happens? The metabolism of phenytoin won't take place thereby increasing the T half of the phenytoin and it is excreted in the urine as glucuronide conjugate. So here this phenytoin undergoes glucuronide type of conjugation reactions and it forms a metabolite through that. So it is excreted in the form of that metabolite and the T half of this drug is almost 20 hours. This is because of the plasma, uh, because of the saturation kinetics which is observed through this phenytoin drug and the therapeutic plasma concentration is about 10 to 20 microgram per ml. In this sense, once this phenytoin is administered, if it reaches a dose of 10 to 20 plasma, uh, 10 to 20 microgram per ml in the plasma, it shows its maximum effect or peak effect and the dose of phenytoin is almost 300 to 400 mg per day. What are the clinical uses of this phenytoin? So it is mainly used in partial seizures, generalized tonic-clonic seizures, absent seizures, and sometimes it is prescribed in the uh, with the along with the drugs of mania. What are the side effects of this phenytoin? So there are dose related as well as non-dose related side effects. So if the dose is altered, so if the dose of this phenytoin is exceeded, then it causes GIT upset. There will be uh, disturbances in the gastrointestinal tract as well as there will be neurological disorders like headache, headache vertigo, ataxia and diplopia and nystagma. So diplopia is a condition where the double vision can be observed in the patient and there will be sedation. Non-dose related dose, uh, non-dose related side effects. So apart from the dose, if we even give the uh, minimal dose, sometimes it shows side effects like uh, gingival hyperplasia. So this is a condition where we can observe the inflammation of the gums. So if the gums are uh, getting inflammated, that condition is called as gingival hypoplasia and hirsutism. So hirsutism is a condition where there will be abnormal growth of hair on the face of women. So this is mostly observed in women. Megaloblastic anemia. This is a condition where the red blood cells will be immature. And hypersensitivity reactions. Hepatitis condition is very rare. This is a severe, uh, sense, uh, severe hypersensitivity condition. And fetal malformations. So there sometimes uh, there may be fetal malformations. The child, uh, there will be abnormalities in the growth of the child and bleeding disorders will be there and osteomalacia, there will be bone deformation. There are, uh, let us see the pharmacokinetic interactions of these drugs. So here, there are a few drugs like chloramphenicol and INH, that is isoniazid hydroxide. So this is a drug which are the inhibitors of liver enzymes. So if uh, these, the inhibitors of liver enzymes are given along with this phenytoin, it may elevate the plasma concentration of phenytoin, uh, thereby leading to its uh, effect for longer period of time. And if we, there are some liver enzyme inducers like carbamazepam and rifampicin, if we give these drugs along with the phenytoin, then it may reduce the plasma levels of this phenytoin drug. The other drug is primidone. So primidone is one of the drug which is metabolized to phenobarbital and PEMA, that is phenyl, phenyl ethyl 
uh, phenyl ethyl malonamide. So here this primidone it is getting metabolized to two different forms that is phenobarbital and PEMA and this is also given through oral route and it is well absorbed in the body and it should be started here the dose of this primidone should be started through the small doses initially it should be given in small doses and later on based on the severity of the epileptic condition the dose should be increased here we can see here the primidone it is first metabolized to phenobarbital and it undergoes two metabolic pathways it's converted to either phenobarbital or phenyl methyl phenyl ethyl melanomide melanomide the clinical uses of this primidone is it is used to treat generalized tonic clonic as well as partial seizures the side effects of these primidone is almost same as that of the phenobarbital there will be GIT disturbances and there will be some sort of motor impairment and sedation will occur so here when compared to phenobarbital here the sedation will be more prominent and there will be GIT disturbances the other drug is carbamazepine so carbamazepine is a tricyclic antidepressant drug so here it is having two actions so that is the reason it is a bipolar activity drug so it shows antidepressant as well as anticonvulsant activity so it is one of the tricyclic antidepressant drug why it is called tricyclic because it is having three ring structures and this 3d structure if we observe the 3d structure of this carbamazepine it looks similar to that of the phenytoin here is the 3d structure and here is the normal structure it is having three rings and here the 3d structure it is almost representing to that of the phenytoin here even the mechanism of action of this carbamazepine is similar to phenytoin because of this 3d structure it acts on the it acts on the sodium channel thereby allowing the entry of sodium into the plasma membrane and thereby exerting the anti-epileptic activity this is the pharmacokinetics of this uh, carbamazepine. So carbamazepine is mostly prescribed through oral route in the form of tablets and that is well absorbed in the body. So a drug which is having more protein pine capacity, what does it do? It, show, it exerts its actions for longer period of time. So this, uh, this carbamazepine is having almost 80% protein pine capacity and it is a strong inducing agent. So, in the sense, we can say it leads to, if, the, if this carbamazepine is given along with oral contraceptives and warfarin, what does it do? It potentiates their actions and thereby it leads to the failure of the action of these drugs. So, if the carbamazepine is administered with warfarin, it is a coagulant. So, it, it, uh, it causes the failure or it prevents the activity of this warfarin. The metabolism mostly occurs in the liver and this carbamazepine is metabolized to a compound called as carbamazepine 10 11 epoxide and carbamazepine 10 11 dihydro dihydroxide. So here epoxide is the active form as well as dihydroxide is the inactive form and it is also excreted in the urine as a gluconate, gluconide conjugate form and the T half of this drug is almost for 30 hours when compared to uh, phenytoin this is having longer t half and the plasma concentration is to about 6 to 12 microgram per ml so once it reaches this concentration it exerts its actions and the dose of the drug is almost about 200 to 800 mg per day it is used in the uh, the clinical uses of this carbamazepine is used, used in the treatment of partial generalized tonic clonic seizures, absence seizures and it is also used in the prescription of ventricular fibrillation. So in this condition the uh, carbamazepine is used along with the medication. What are the side effects of these drugs? So there are various side effects observed. The main side effects are GIT disturbances and the generalized side effects include uh, drowsiness, dizziness, ataxia, headache and diplopia and hepatotoxicity. So as this, this causes, I mean the metabolic, it causes over metabolism of the drugs, then the uh, hepatotoxicity conditions are very rare and there will be congenital malformations. So there will be malformations or as we can see the growth of the uh, of the growth in the congenital area will be uh, less 
and there will be hyponatremia that is low sodium levels because if this, uh, if this carbamazepine is used for longer period of time then the sodium levels can be decreased and thereby it causes water intoxication and hypersensitivity reactions are very rare and sometimes it may cause blood discharges as fetal aplastic anemia occurs so in the fetal aplastic anemia condition so the anemic conditions which are caused in the fetal here the carbamazepine can, should be contraindicated what are the pharmacokinetic interactions? So if it is given with the inhibitors of the liver enzymes like phenytoin, phenobarbital and rifampin, it will elevate the plasma levels. It will elevate the plasma levels of these drugs. And if these, if it is given with the uh, liver inducers, inducer drug like erythromycin, isoniazid, verapamil and simetidin, it will reduce the plasma levels. The other drug is ethosuximide. So ethosuximide is one of the drug which is used as a drug of choice especially for the absence seizures. So it is mainly used in the treatment of absence seizures and it is having higher uh, efficacy. So when compared to other drugs it is more effective and it is one of the safest drugs because it is having lesser side effects. And the, uh, the pharmacokinetics of this ethosuximide is that volume of distribution is, is equal to total body water. So what does this mean? Here once it is entering into the body it gets distributed so the distribution is through once it is entering into the body it gets solubilized in the fluids which are present in the brain and it is distributing all over the body so here the volume of distribution is equal so the total body water content how much the total body water is there the volume of distribution of this ethosuximide is almost the same and it is non plasma protein or fat binding so it does not bind to any plasma protein or binding so here if there is any excessive binding of this plasma protein uh, what does it do it binds to the plasma uh, plasma protein and it will exert its actions for longer period of time but sometimes it may cause once it binds to the protein the drug effect will be inactivated so in that condition the drug fail to show its actions and if there is if there is any saturation condition this situation occurs so it does not bind to any of the plasma proteins as well as any of the fats so here we can see the mechanism of action here this ethosuximide it won't allow the calcium to enter into the into the cell so if the excessive ionic concentration which is with the excessive ionic concentration which is entering into the plasma membrane will be blocked by this ethosuximide if the ethosuximide is given in higher concentration, it causes inhibition of the sodium potassium ATPS pump. So here, what does this mean? In this sodium potassium ATPS pump, the sodium entry is taking place into the channel and potassium is exiting out by the utilization of ATP. Here, the concentration of the ions are maintained. But this, if the excessive, uh, excessive uh, sodium entry and potassium exit takes place, then it may lead to depolarization of the cell. So in that condition, uh, if this uh, ATPS pump is inhibited, then the uh, depolarization cell membrane is stabilized and it depresses the cerebral metabolic rate. So the metabolic reaction in the cerebrum is, uh, is depressed and it inhibits GABA aminotransferase. So GABA aminotransferase is one of the enzymes which, uh, which is metabolizing the gamma aminobutyric acid. So if gamma amino, uh, this GABA aminotransferase enzyme is inhibited, then then the more amount of GABA action is exerted whereby the uh, this uh, because of the inhibitory effects of this GABA this epileptic seizures can be controlled and there are other drugs like fensaximide and methsaximide fensaximide is not used because it is not that effective when compared to ethosuximide and methsaximide is not used because of this toxic effects so this is the pictorial representation. We can see the sodium ATPS pump where the sodium is entering into the uh, when so sodium is uh, entering into the one and once the sodium is getting diffused through the other channel, it is getting out and potassium is entering potassium is entering into the cell by the utilization of ATP. Here the movement of the sodium and potassium molecules takes place through this pump. So what are the side effects of these uh, ethosuximate? So mainly it will cause the gastric disturbances. There will be, uh, along with the gastric disturbances, it sometimes leads to the 
pain, nausea and vomiting like conditions, lethargy and fatigue, there will be severe headache, hiccups and euphoria conditions and skin rashes and lupus erythromatous. So lupus erythromatous is a skin related disorder where the person becomes fatted and thereby there will be butterfly like rashes on the face. So on either side of the nose here there will be rashes which look similar to the butterfly. The other drug is valproic acid. So valproic acid is an aliphatic carboxylic acid compound and it is a fully ionized compound. So in the body pH, once the valproic acid, once it's entering into the body, based on the pH of the body, it gets ionized and it is a fully charged ion which is present in the body and it is converted to the valproate ion which is the active form. And as I told you, it is one of the carboxylic acid compound with anti-epileptic activity. The mechanism of action is almost similar to that of the ferritoin. It, uh, it uh, alters the sodium channel and the, it increases the GABA levels in the brain. So if GABA levels are uh, increased, it shows inhibitory effect and it facilitates the glutamic acid decarboxylase. So glutamic acid decarboxylase is one of the enzyme which is used in the metabolic reactions. So this will be facilitated and because of the increased GABA, uh, GABA levels in the body then the neuro the GABA will be transported more in the neurons and neuroglia neuroglia regions and thereby the GABA receptors exerts their inhibitory actions and it will increase the membrane potassium conductance so if the uh, here we can see in the ions also sodium potassium and calcium they play a major important role so if more amount of sodium and calcium are entering into the cell it causes more contractility at the same time here we can say these are like excitatory type of ions and sodium potassium is type of inhibitory type of ions so here the potassium conductance will be increased. Let us see the pharmacokinetics of valproic acid. So here these valproic acids are mainly available in the um, uh, in the oral form as well as the IV root also. So in the oral form they are marketed as capsules but not tablets and in the children's uh, for children's they are marketed as syrups and even they are administered through IV root. And the metabolism of this valproic acid occurs mainly in the liver and the, it is having high oral bioavailability. So when compared to all other drugs, even in the oral route also, it's showing greater bioavailability. And here if we administer this valproic acid with the drugs like carbamazepine, phenytoin, topiramide and phenobarbital, the metabolism of the drug is inhibited. So that is the reason these drugs should not be given with this valproic acid. And it is excreted in the urine mainly in the form of glucuronide and the plasma T half T half of this drug is almost for about 15 hours what are the clinical uses of this valproic acid so this valproic acid is mainly used in the absence myoclonic seizures and it is also used in generalized tonic clonic seizures so generalized tonic clonic seizures absence seizures myoclonic seizures but it is uh, when compared to other drugs like carbamazepine, phenytoin and phenobarbital, it is very less effective in partial seizures. So all the drugs are having very potent, very potent in partial, partial seizures. But this is having lesser effect when compared to those drugs and it is also used in the prescription of mania. What are the side effects of these drugs? So it includes side effects like general side effects like uh, nausea, vomiting and GI disturbances. And in sometimes if a person takes this drug, it may causes increase in the appetite. So because of the increase in the appetite, the person will consume more food leading to the overweight. And there will be transient, some hair loss will be there. And hepatotoxicity reactions are rare. And there will be decrease in the platelet count that is thrombocytopenia. And in children, it may lead to the neural tube defect like spina bifida. So there will be inflammation and there, there will be some breakage of the spinal cord leading to a bump like uh, formation, inflammation on the uh, spinal cord region of the children. So uh, in the offspring, it may lead to spina bifida or neural tube defects. The other drug is clonazepam. So clonazepam is a benzodiazepine drug which is acting through the GABA receptor mechanism and it is a long acting drug. So it exerts its actions for almost 24 to 72 hours.
So here it is acting to the GABA receptor. In the GABA receptor, there will be benzodiazepine site where this clonazepam will bind to the benzodiazepine site and exerts its actions by allowing the entry of calcium through the GABA receptor and allowing the GABA to bind to the GABA receptor. The clinical uses of this drug is it is used in the treatment of absence seizures, myoclonic seizures and infantile spasms. The side effects, the, uh, here when compared to all other drugs, this, di this benzodiazepine uh, like drugs, that's clonazepam, it is having a prominent side effect of sedation. So if it is used for a longer period of time, it causes sedation and it is used in, uh, in, it is having a side effect of ataxia, that's body movements are not controlled and behavioral disorders can be occurred. The other drug is Lamotrigine. So Lamotrigine is a drug which is used as an addition therapy in valproic acid. So this valproic acid is one of the potent anti-epileptic drug. So it is used as an addition therapy. So if the, uh, if the valproic acid and this Lamotrigine are given in combination, it shows greater effect. And it is also having the absorption, oral absorption of this drug is also is very high. And the T-half of this drug is almost for about 24 hours and this drug will bind to the plasma proteins but the affinity of this drug towards the plasma protein is very low. If we see the mechanism of action of this drug, Lamotrigin, it inhibits the excitatory amino acid release. So for example, there are various amino acids. So glutamate as well as aspartate, these are the excitatory amino acids. So here, if these excitatory amino acids are inhibited, thereby it leads to the blockade of the sodium channels. So if the sodium channels are blocked, then it leads to the inhibitory effects. The clinical uses of these Lamotrigine are it is mainly used in absence seizures, myoclonic seizures and generalized tonic-clonic seizures. The side effects of these, uh, the side effects of this Lamotrigine are it, it's having common side effects like dizziness, headache and diplopia that is double vision, nausea and solemnance and the other one is the peculiar type of side effect is that life threatening rash that is Steven Johnson. So Steven Johnson is a rash which is caused to the skin as well as mucous membrane and if this rash occurs in severe, severe uh, I mean this, if the severity of the rash is increased then it may lead to death. The other drug is gabapentin. So gabapentin is a GABA analog. It, it looks similarly to the GABA and it may increase the activity of GABA or else it may inhibit the reuptake of GABA. So if the GABA reuptake is inhibited then the availability of the GABA to the GABA receptors will be more and thereby the GABA action will be prolonged. Let us see the pharmacokinetics of this gabapentin. So this gabapentin, it does not bind to any of the plasma proteins and it is even not metabolized. So this gabapentin, it is excreted in the urine as such or else it is excreted out of the body as such. So it is not converted to any metabolic form because it is, uh, it is a structural analog of GABA and it looks similarly to the GABA. And it does not induce or inhibit. It, it's not altering any of the liver enzymes. So if we see other drugs, they are either, either inducing or in, uh, they are inhibiting the liver enzymes. But here, because, uh, this gabapentin, it does not alter any of the liver enzymes. And the plasma T half of this gabapentin is almost for about 5 to 7 hours. What are the clinical uses of these uh, gabapentin? So this gabapentin is not used alone. It is always given in combination with other drugs in the treatment of partial as well as generalized tonic-clonic seizures. What are the side effects of these uh, gabapentin? So gabapentin has a side effect called solemnness, dizziness, ataxia, fatigue as well as nystagmus. The other drug is vigabatrin. So Vigabatrin is one of the anti-epileptic drugs. These are, we can see, these are the newer drugs. So Vigabatrin is a newer drug uh, which is available in the market and the absorption of this drug is very rapid. In the sense, if the absorption is rapid, the bioavailability of the drug is almost 60%. So if the bioavailability is greater than half, then the drug absorption is, uh, then the drug will exert its actions more. And the T-half of the drug is almost for about 6 to 8 hours and it is eliminated by kidneys. So if we see all other, dr if we see all other drugs, they are eliminated 
through urine but it is eliminated through kidney but it is contraindicated in mental illness condition because if a person is having mental illness and if we give this vega veteran it may worsen that condition and this vega veteran also acts through the gaba receptor mechanism which is binding to the uh, which is binding to the benzodiazepine side of the gaba receptor clinical uses of these uh, GABA receptor is that partial seizures and it is used in West syndrome. West syndrome is nothing but the seizures which are caused in the infants. The, what are the side effects of this Vika pattern? So it is having common side effects like drowsiness, dizziness, weight gain, agitation. There will be uh, agitating movements in the patient. There will be confusion and mental disorder like psychosis. The other drug is Topiramate. So, topiramate initially in the 2000, when this topiramate is approved by the United States of America, as we can say that it is approved by the FDA in combination with uh, fentramine for weight loss. In the sense, we can say it is used as a food supplement. So, it is approved by the Food and Drug Administration of United States in combination with fentramine and it is used in the weight loss. But later on research, it is proved that it is also having anti epileptic activity the mechanism of the uh, mechanism of action of this topiramide is about it is blocking the voltage dependent sodium channels so here sodium channels are getting blocked we can say it's almost similar to phenytoin but not that of this uh, that not similar to phenytoin and it potentiates the inhibitory effects of GABA as well as it decreases excitatory action of kinate on AMPA receptors. So AMPA receptors are one of the receptors we can say these are the ki kinate type of receptors where the kinate will bind to those receptors and exert the inhibitory actions. So uh, with all these mechanisms this uh, topiramide can act and it is used as a teratogenic in animal models. So in animal models it uh, I mean, it is uh, used as a pharmacological drug in the animal models. What are the pharmacokinetics of these drugs? So, the bioavailability or the absorption capacity of the drug is almost about 80% and it is not having any effect on it has, uh, I mean, uh, what what does we say uh, when if we see the other drugs if those drugs are taken along with food then the absorption capacity of the drug will be decreased because of the presence of food but here this topiramide the absorption capacity of this topiramide is not altered even if the food is present in the sense this drug can be taken along with food also and it is not having any effect on the microsomal enzymes or liver enzymes and it is having 9 to 17 percent of the protein binding capacity and it is mostly excreted in the urine so it is excreted in the urine and it is excreted in the urine in the unchanged form only so the metabolism of this drug is very rare and the plasma t off of this drug is almost for about 18 to 24 hours the clinical uses of these drugs are this is mainly used in the partial seizures generalized tonic clonic seizures and the absence seizures the side effects include conditions like psychological disorders, there will be psychological dysfunctioning and weight loss, sedation, dizziness, fatigue, urolithiasis. This is a condition where the concentration of the stone or the stone formation in the bladder will be increased and teratogenicity. The other drug is tiagabine. So tiagabine is one of the drug and it is the derivative of nipecotic acid. So here this is the structure if we see this is uh, the ring with the nitrogen group and the carboxylic acid group which is that is, that is nipecotic uh, acid and this tiagabine is the derivative of this nipecotic acid. If we see the mechanism of action, it inhibits the GABA reuptake mechanism. So here, once the, if we see this pictorial representation, here the GABA, once it is uh, once it is released into the synaptic maze, once it binds to the receptor and undergoes metabolism, it the reuptake mechanism will take place. So here, once the drug is getting up reuptake and it is utilized in the synthesis and release again, this is a cyclic process. But here, if the reuptake is inhibited by the TIA-GABA, then the availability of the GABA near the receptors will be more and thereby the GABA can bind to the GABA receptors more and exerts its actions. 
the pharmacokinetic action uh, the pharmacokinetics of this drug is the bioavailability in the sense the oral absorption is very good that the bioavailability of the drug is almost for about 90% and it is highly protein bound in the sense it is excreted as unchanged and the protein bound capacity is about 96% percent and it is metabolized in the liver and the plasma t half is almost for about four to seven hours what are the clinical uses of this tiagabin so tiagabin is not used alone it is always used in combination therapy with partial seizure in uh, always used in combination therapy with other anti-epileptic drugs in the treatment of partial seizures as well as generalized tonic clonic seizures what are the side effects of these tiagavan? So it is having normal side effects like sedation, dizziness, asthenia, as well as mild memory impairment. There will be little memory loss and there will be abdominal pain. The other drug is zonisamide. So zonisamide is a drug which is first initially marketed in the Japan. Later it is uh, marketed all over the world and it is a sulfonamide derivative. So this is the structure of the zonisamide and if we see the sulfonamide, uh, the sulfonamide structure is also present in the zonisamide. Mechanism of action. So here the zonisamide it acts by various mechanism of actions. One uh, mechanism of action is it potentiates GABA inhibitory effects as well as it, it acts in the calcium T channels. So here there are uh, T channels as well as L channels of the calcium. So here calcium T channels are affected whereby the entry of the calcium is prevented into the channel and thereby it is also acting on the inactivation of the sodium channels as well as it facilitates 5-HT and dopaminergic uh, neurotransmission here this serotonin dopamine and GABA are the inhibitory neurotransmitters so if these are the actions of these drugs are potentiated then the inhibitory actions will be more thereby the anti-epileptic condition can be reduced what are the pharmacokinetics uh, of these drugs? So here if we observe, this drug is having 100% bioavailability which is one of the most characteristic features. If we see the newer drug, uh, drug uh, drugs are having better pharmacokinetics when compared to the older drugs. So this drug is having 100% bioavailability and the protein binding capacity of this drug is 40% and it is extensively metabolized in the liver. So the metabolic capacity of this drug is more in the liver and but it does not affect any liver enzymes in the sense it is not altering either inducing or inhibiting the liver enzymes and plasma t half is also very high when compared to other drugs so this drug is having plasma t half of almost above 50 to 68 hours the clinical uses of this drug is it is only used in the partial seizures that too is as the add-on therapy it is used in combination with other drugs in the partial seizures it is having common side effects like dizziness, ataxia, solemnness, headache, nausea and vomiting and loss of appetite. So these are the common side effects. No markable uh, side effects are observed with these newer drugs. So, why we are giving anti-epileptic drugs? So few of the things we have to make into consideration. So one thing is that we have to diagnose the patient in order to find which type of epilepsy the person is suffering from. So not only the clinical apart from the eyewitness, not only uh, the eyewitness or else we can say that uh, Apart from the patient's uh, conversation, we have to make sure the diagnosis is done to the patient in order to recognize what type of the epilepsy is suffering from. And EEG, that is electrical encephalogram, will be a supportive or as we can say, it, it will be an additional information for us in order to determine which type of epilepsy it's suffering from. And at the same time, we have to make sure that if a patient is having past medical history, like if a patient is having hypoglycemic conditions or infection or tumor so patient medical history also has to be taken into consideration while prescribing this uh, while administering or prescribing these anti-epileptic drugs what are the common causes of failures? So why these anti-epileptics are uh, failing uh, failing in order to exert their actions so one is that improper diagnosis so each and every, uh, I mean, we can say each and every anti-epileptic drug is not treated in all type of seizures. If we give, for suppose, if we give uh, the drug like uh, uh, 
Tiaga by no Viga pattern. If we uh, give Viga pattern for uh, uh, absence seizures, then it won't work out because it is used in the treatment of partial seizures. So, here we have to make sure the drug is prescribed in such a way that based on the uh, type of uh, type of the seizures where the person is suffering from. And at the same time, incorrect choice of the drug. So, the choice of the drug should be proper. So, the drug choice as well as diagnosis should be uh, proper. Then only the drug should be prescribed and in inadequate or excessive dose. So, dose of the, all these drugs are dose dependent. So, we have to administer in the proper dose. If the dose is reduced, it shows, in, in, uh, it shows no effect and if the dose is excessive, it shows adverse effects and poor compliance. That, that is the intake uh, from the patient's side if it is reduced, then in all these conditions, the anti-epileptics fail to show their effect. Anti-epileptics in pregnancy. So, if a pregnant uh, woman is having epileptics, so mostly the seizures are very harmful for the pregnant women. If at all a, post, a pregnant woman is having epileptic conditions, then the drug combination should be given when compared to monotherapy. So monotherapy is not that preferable. That is the reason combination therapy will be given. And apart from that, along with that, folic acid supplements also should be given to that pregnant woman. The drugs like phenytoin and sodium valproate are contraindicated in this situation. And apart from that, oxcarbum, oxcarbum zipine is more comfortable or we can say there are uh, the carbomazepine, uh, uh, I mean oxcarbomazepine is more potent when compared to the carbomazepine in pregnant ladies and experience with new anticonvulsants still is not reliable. In this sense, in the uh, pregnant ladies, we should not give newer drugs like uh, we are uh, vigabatrin and all these drugs should not be preferred in these uh, ladies so mostly the drugs like phenytoin phenobarbital are more recommended status epilepticus so status epilepticus is one of this uh, type of epileptic conditions where the seizures will occur only for short period of time so in the sense if a person is having the status epilepticus the seizures or the uh, dysfunctioning of the brain will be only for shorter period of time it will not last for longer period of time and that is almost it lasts for about 30 minutes and it can lead to hypoxia, acidemia, cardiovascular collapse and renal shutdown. If at all it is there in severity conditions, so these are the few other effects which can be observed in status epilepticus condition. What is, the, what is the treatment of the status epilepticus? So, status epilepticus in initial stages, in the initial, uh, in the initial stage of the status epilepticus, it is mostly the diazepam that is through IV route in the dose of 5 to 10 mg is given and that should be given in a repetitive dose for 5 to 10 mg for every 20 to 30 minutes. So, it should be given in a repetitive dose. At, uh, for every 20 to 30 minutes and the other drug is lorazepam which is given in the form of IV root in the dose of 2 to 6 mg again in the repetitive dose of about 20 to 30 minutes and after giving this drug uh, I mean in the initial stages if these uh, drugs if these drugs do not show effect and the status epilepticus condition is prolonged, then the drugs like phenytoin through IV route at the dose of 15 to 20 mg per kg. This is based on the body weight for every 30 minutes in the repetitive dose of 100 to 150. So initially 15 to 20 mg is given. Later the dose is increased to 100 to 150 mg and that is given for every 30 minutes. And the other drug is phenobarbital which is recommended through IV route in the dose of 20. 10 to 20 mg per kg and the dose is increased to 120 to 140 mg per mg for every 20 minutes so this is in adults in infants the diazepam is mostly recommended through rectal route